Hey, I'm Julie, a fan of Balzer, and I think you're really going to enjoy today's video, which is all about creating this super cool word necklace. I'm here in Canvas Workspace for Mac, and I'm going to go ahead and choose the text button and then click on my canvas. And I'm going to write my one little word for the year, which is enjoy. And you can see here it is. Now this is a script font that I have been playing around with and I like a lot, but if you want to change the font, you can just go ahead and scroll through all the different fonts that are on your computer until you find something that works for you. Now for this particular um, project, you definitely want something where all the letters touch. That's really important. This is a really cute font. So as long as you have something where all of the um, letters touch, you're in good shape. Okay, I've decided that I like this font and I'm resizing it so it's really big so that it almost fills the whole mat. Now, there are a couple problems. The first problem is <laughs> this dot is not attached and we need it to be attached. The second thing is you can see this kind of overlapping that's happening here where the line comes through, that's gonna cut apart. So in order to unite everything, I'm going to go on over to the edit menu and to the under the process overlap, I'm going to choose weld. Now you can see that all those lines have disappeared. However, there's still some weird bumps and stuff. So I'm going to double click. Oops, double click. And I want to make sure that this is checked hide control points because I want to have as few points interfering so that I can really see what's happening. Then wherever I see the bumps, I'm going to hold down the shift key while I press on all the different little dots that I want removed. Then I'm going to go up to the path editing tools and I'm going to click the minus sign or the delete point and you can see they all disappear and straighten out. And if you need to see what things look like, you can click off and see, hey, did that fix it? Where else do I need to make some adjustments? Double click again. And again, you can just simply click on whatever you would like to have removed and hit that minus to go ahead and get rid of it. So the last problem is that this circle is too far away. So I have a couple choices. I can bring it closer. I can create a bridge. It's totally up to me how I want to deal with it. So I'm actually going to first delete it. So I'm going to select everything in the circle and then hit the minus. Then from the basic shapes menu over on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and choose a circle, resize it. This is larger than the original circle that was there. And that's because I'm just going to stick it on top there and I need it to actually look like a circle. So then I'm gonna select both parts, go back to process overlap and click on weld. And now you can see I have my dot and it's attached, which looks great. However, to make this into a necklace, we still need a way to attach to the chain. So essentially I am gonna create some sort of jump ring ish things here or some circles is a way to attach it. So again, from the circle menu, pick a circle, resize it. Now you want this to be big enough that you can attach something to it, but not so big that it's like outrageously outsizing your letters. Then holding down the option key, I'm going to click on it and drag and that creates a second identical size circle. So I'm going to come over here towards the Y, which is the other logical point you would hang it at. Now I want to make sure that these two circles are even. So holding the shift key, I'm going to click on the first circle. Now you can see both are selected at the same time. I'm going to use the align tools to center align. And this will make sure that my necklace hangs relatively straight. Then I'm going to go ahead and nudge this over just a little bit. It seems a little too far out for me. So I'm gonna make it so that it sits a little more on top of this Y here. So now you can see I have my basic setup here. If I'm happy with it, I'm gonna go ahead, select all three parts. And once again, we're going to weld. However, we need to have a hole in the center of these. So we're going back to the circle menu. And again, we're gonna make an even smaller circle 
sit it so that it's right in there. Option, click to make a second one, drag it over. We want to make sure that they're holding the shift key, that they are aligned. So we're just repeating the same thing. I know that they're aligned. Now I can click on it and use my arrow keys to nudge it so that it looks more centered where I want it. Once I'm satisfied, I'm selecting all three parts. But instead of weld, I'm going to go all the way over to remove, overlap, or subtract, actually. We're going to do subtract. So I do subtract. And now this is just one piece. Okay, so this is ready for us to go ahead and send over to our machine. So I'm going to go up to the top to the file menu and I want to transfer my FCM file via the internet. So I'm going to click on that. And it says the registered machine is ready to download the transferred file. So let's go cut it. I'm here at my scan and cut and I'm going to choose retrieve data and the wireless button. And there's our file. Now I want to scan in my shrink plastic because my shrink plastic is only eight and a half by 11 and I think this file's a little bit larger. So here it is on my screen. The scan's a little bit dark. So I'm going to push the wrench tool and go to a slightly lighter background. Now I can see this more easily. I need to resize this. It's just too big for my shrink plastic. So I'm going to edit, object edit, and I'm going to go ahead and just bring it in a little bit. Okay. So once it looks like it's on there, I can also go ahead and use the nudge tool to send it over so that I'm really sure it's totally on there. But it looks great. If I wanna conserve my shrink film, I can go ahead and bring it up to the top as well. Say, okay, okay again, I'm still okay. I'm going to select cut and I'm gonna press start. Now that it's done cutting, I'm going to remove the mat and then we can pull our word off. So I have two Teflon sheets here and I'm going to basically sandwich this between them. I also have a spatula and a skewer because in case I need to manipulate this around, it's going to be hot. I want to make sure I don't touch it with my fingers and I have a heat gun. So I'm just going to go ahead now, cover that up and let's start to shrink. As you can see, while it's warm, you can really manipulate it a lot. I curved it slightly a little bit so that it would fit better on a necklace. And I used my spatula to kind of flatten it out at times. Um, if you find that there's anywhere that's like bumpy, you can always reheat it. And again, you can flatten it, reshape it. Do whatever it is that you want with it. Please don't touch it with your fingers. It's very, very hot. Let it cool all the way. So this top sheet was on here just to create some weight so it didn't curl too much on itself. But once it started shrinking, then I was able to pull it up and you saw me heat it and shape it and all that kind of stuff. But you want to make sure that it's nice and hard and you're not touching anything that's too hot. But... Here you go. You can see now this is this is a hard, like almost acrylic surface. And there's my little word. So we just need to make it into a necklace. I love the gold color of this. So here's my enjoy. And I put out a couple different things. I have some jump rings of all sorts of different sizes. Um, I have two pieces of gold chain, which I could attach like this, or I have a single long piece of gold chain. I also have a rubber 
necklace. It just depends on what the look is that you're going for. How do you want it to look? So for instance, if I was going to use the rubber necklace, I would probably use the bigger jump rings because it has to fit through the hole and over the rubber part. Um, if I was going to use the small gold chains here, I would use some smaller jump rings because it just needs to go through the hole at the end of the chain and into here. It just depends on what you're doing. So I tend to be a person who likes my jewelry to look a little more fun. So I might go with this rubber necklace, but on the other hand, if you want a slightly more refined look, you know, this is going to be a little more refined. You could also start with a smaller enjoy and you'd end up with a smaller necklace. So totally up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and put my jump rings on and make this necklace happen. In case you've never dealt with a jump ring or a split ring, it has already a little gap in it. You want to push it sideways to open it. You never want to pull it open because you want to maintain the circle. Then you can go ahead and put it through whatever it's going through put one end of this necklace in here. And then to close it up, I do the same thing where I go back. You can sometimes have people say one, two, three, you're bringing it infinitesimally closer, but this is how you maintain the circle without somehow flattening it or doing something odd. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So here you can see my necklace. It looks really cute. It's ready to wear. If it bothers you that this is silver and this is gold, you can always color this with a marker or you can use a different color of shrink plastic for your enjoy, but I'm ready to wear mine. Thanks so much for watching. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to visit my blog at ballsordesigns.pipehead.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget about the Scan and Cut website at scanandcut.com.